Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you, and thank you for joining us again this morning at God's Way Community Church. Amen. We thank God for you being, amen, in the audience, and we hope and pray that today's message will bless your heart in some way and that it will do what the Word of God is designed to do, which is to convince, convict, and convert the heart. Amen. Sometimes we we hear preaching and, and today's modern uh, uh, movements among preachers, I think there are a lot of people who go to church and feel like uh, they are supposed to be tickled or entertained. Uh, and while we want to feel great when the Word of God comes about, we, we know that that is not God's primary intent. Amen. But He wants His Word to go into your heart and change you in some way that you will draw closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Now, we know that God is looking to come back and He is going to return to the earth soon. And we know that when Jesus comes back, he's going to look for someone who is ready. Amen. He's not going to ask what pandemic is spreading across the country. He's not going to ask us who's in the White House. He's not going to ask us who has been rioting and protesting on the streets. Amen. But the scripture says, amen, in the book of Revelation, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Amen. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. So we know that when God comes, uh, that is to say that there's not going to be any time for us to get right what we haven't gotten right. Amen. Amen. We know that there's going to be a time when we're going to have to be ready to see the Lord. So it, with that in mind, we're going to go into our lesson today, and we hope that it is going to help us to get our minds settled, that we are going to do what God has told us to do, and not worry about other things as much as we uh, have been. I just want to say before we go into our lesson, it's easy sometimes for our emotions to run away with us and we, because we're in this flesh and we live in the world, it's so easy for things to overtake us and sometimes we can give ourselves too much to the wrong thing in the wrong direction and neglect the things that are most important, which are the spiritual things of God. So that is why God has given us preachers, amen. Thank God for the preachers to preach the word of God to us. Amen. How can they hear without a preacher? Amen. So thank God for that. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Genesis, chapter number 35. We're going to read verses number 1 and including verse 3, and we're going to take our text from that particular setting. So if you'll turn in your Bibles, if you have them in your homes while you're listening, amen, and we'll read from there. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. Amen, and I hope you're following along with me, or if not, maybe you can catch up before the message is over. Amen, and we, God will bless your soul as you do that. In Genesis chapter number 1, uh, Genesis chapter number 35, that is, verse number 1, and it begins as follows. Uh, and God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there. Okay, let me read that again so that we can get the full effect of that. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Verse number two, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. Amen. Verse number three, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Amen, amen. If you would please pray with me that God's divine hand be upon the message. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. Lord, we ask that you forgive us, blot out our transgressions and our sins. Let no harm or hurt to come between us and the people that are listening, but ask you to split your blessing upon us as we are apart and not gathered into the assembly of God. God, we ask that you anoint the speaker. We know that your word is already anointed. Let your word go out and re not, not return, boy, but accomplish those things that you have determined that they should accomplish in the hearts of those who you have determined whose hearts should be blessed. And God will give you the praise for it. We'll give you the glory for it. And we do these things in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name we say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. We thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For how he has shed his innocent blood for us. 
But we're going to take our topic from chapter number 35. I don't plan to preach very long this morning, amen, but I thank God for the message, and I hope that you receive the word of God today. Our message for the day is go back to the house of God, amen. Go back to the house of God. Let me say that one more time. Go back to the house of of God. Amen. Amen. We, we, I, I, I remember years ago when I was in high school, I was just a young uh, teenager and uh, you know how teenagers are in high school. We do crazy things. And, and I remember one time I was uh, on my way to home. I had to walk down a long hall to get to the, the buses. The buses parked out in the front of the school and I had to walk all the way down the hallway to get to the bus. And so as I got to the very end of the building, which was a good long walk, uh, and I saw the buses sitting there. I remembered that I left my, my wallet in the chemistry class. I think I was taking and I and I said, oh man, I gotta go back and, and get my, 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 my wallet from this place. So I, I turned around and I ran back down the hallway as fast as I could. Now, there was a rule in school that there was no running in the hallway. Amen, everybody remember that. Amen, but there was no running allowed in the hallway. But I had to get to the bus because I lived about 12 or 13 miles out of town and I didn't want to miss the bus. So I was running and lo and behold, as they say, my dad used to say, somebody's always watching you. And uh, at this particular time, it was certainly true. There was a teacher standing in the hall out of the doorway of one of her classrooms and she saw me jetting down the hallway and she said, Roy Bacon, I want you to come back here. And I said, oh man. So I, you know, I turned around and I went back because you. I was in those days when I went to school. You, you listened to the teachers. You were obedient to the teachers. Amen. Somebody say amen. So I went back and she said to me, "You know what I want you to do? I want you to go all the way back to the beginning of this hallway and start over. And I want you to walk all the way back." to where those buses are. And oh man, I tell you, I said, please, I beg you, don't make me do that. My bus is gonna leave me and I'm not gonna be able to make it on time. She said, I don't care about that. You know that there's a rule that we don't run in the hallway, so I want you to go all the way back. And I remember that day having to walk. I was mad, I was so mad that I had to go all the way back to that end of that building. And lo and behold, I missed the bus just as I thought, and a whole bunch of other stuff transpired after that that I won't tell you about uh, because it wasn't pleasant. So, but anyway, uh, the point I wanted to make from telling you that story was I remember resenting having to go back, but I learned something from that situation and that, and that sometimes uh, just because we think we ought to do something is not what we really should do. And I learned also that sometimes you have to go back and you have to start over. Sometimes going back brings things to the mind that you can think about. So I begin to say to myself, well, you know, if you weren't playing around in the classroom, you wouldn't have forgot your wallet in the first place. Amen. So sometimes when we go back and we have to start over from scratch, we learn some things from that. Hello, somebody. Now, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes going back is what we need to do. And uh, in this our, our setting, as we have today in our scriptures coming from our text, Jacob had fled from the face of his brother Esau. Many of you know that story very well, so I won't linger in the details too much. But Jacob had fled from his brother Esau. And when Esau, he had stolen Esau's birthright. And his mother told him to go to, to your, your uncle Laban in Pandanaram, that's in the area of Mesopotamia, and go over to Pandanaram and stay with him until Esau cools off. Well, that cooling off turned into a good long time for Jacob and he ended up not being able to see uh, uh, Esau for another 21 years and he stayed over in uh, Pandanaram and while Jacob was on his way there you may remember the text in Genesis chapter number 28 I believe it was where Jacob had, fell asleep that night and the Bible says when he fell asleep at night he had a dream and the dream Jacob had, he saw a ladder uh, in the dream, and he lay down, and there were angels descending up and down the ladder. Amen. And he and Jacob was afraid, and he woke up at night. And you you may remember this. The next morning, he woke up, and he said, "This is surely none other than the what? The house of God." And he called the name of that place Bethel. The word Bethel means the house of God. 
And Jacob said, this is none other. This is a terrible place. Amen. I don't know about you, but when you're in the presence of God, you know you've been in the presence of God. Amen. If you go to the church and you're not stirred by the Spirit of God and nothing moves your soul to change your disposition, then you have not been in the presence that you need to be in. Something is wrong if you can go to the house of God and leave and still lie and cheat and do the same things we used to do. If something is wrong when you're in the presence of the Almighty God, and you don't quit and move and something doesn't shake you to your core and let you know that God has been there where you laying down. Jacob woke up and he said, this is none other than the house of God. And he called that place Bethel, but the Bible says it was called Luz at the first. Amen. But Jacob called it Bethel. Now, Jacob made a decree to God. Watch out, somebody. I'm going to help you right here. So when we make God a promise and we tell God we're going to do something, God's going to hold us to it. Hello, somebody. Some of you in the audience have told God a long time ago you were going to get off drugs. You were going to stop your lying. You were going to stop your cheating and your backbiting and your shouting up and you were going to come to God and do right and God has saved you and kept you even through this pandemic and you're still away from God and haven't gone back to the house of God. I want you to know that God wants you to go back to the house of God. Amen. So Jacob made a decree and I want him to tell you something. Be careful the Bible says let not your lips utter anything before the Lord because the angel of the Lord is listening and when you tell God I'm going to do something he expects you to follow through with what you told him. Jacob says, if you will take me on my journey, hello somebody, if you will take me on my journey and keep me while I'm at my uncle's house, I'll come again, I will, I will serve you, and you will be my God. Hello somebody. Somebody has told God, if you'll get me out of this corona, if you'll save us through this situation, I'll be your servant, and I'll, you will be my God. Well, God is still God, and you're still out of the pandemic, and he's still waiting for you to keep your word. God is still looking for you to do what you told him you were going to do, and now he has a word for you. When things get where you can change, go back to the house of God. Get yourself in a position that God can use you and do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. So Jacob said, if you will save me, God, I'll be your servant. If you will take me back. So God brought him back. And, and let me tell you what happened. See, sometimes we forget, don't we? Amen, somebody. Amen, we forget. But Jacob, he went and he, the Bible says he saw Esau and got everything right with Esau. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing now for the sake of time. But Jacob got everything right with his brother Esau. And after he got things right, he went and sojourned, the Bible said, and he settled himself in a place called Sukkoth, S-U-C-C-O-T-H. He settled in that place. Now, this was a place that the descendants of Cain's son, amen, Canaan, Ham's son, Canaan, the Hebites, they had settled in this place. And, and Jacob was sojourning among them. And it came to pass that the Bible talked about it. Jacob had a daughter named Dinah, and a man, the, the prince of the Hevites, went and lay with Dinah out of wedlock. And, and the Bible says he was an honorable man, a young man, more honorable than all the other people. And, and he, he wanted to marry Jacob's only daughter, Dinah. And Jacob said, we can't let you marry somebody. We won't marry to the uncircumcised. So they all agreed, all the men agreed to be circumcised of the Hevites. And the Bible talks about it at the when they are had been circumcised and they were sore that uh, Jacob's two sons uh, Simeon and Levi went and killed all the men of the Hevites uh, and Jacob was afraid because of that and he said oh you make me to stink uh, before the people that the people in the neighborhoods and the other villages they're going to hear about what you've done and they're going to kill me uh, and wipe us off on the face of the earth uh, and he was afraid of that and so this is when we come to our text that the Lord appeared to Jacob and he said arise uh, and go back to the house of God. Arise and go back to Bethel. And I want you to do something when you arise. I want you to go and I want you to build an altar. Hear me somebody, God's talking to you. I want you to go back and I want you to build an altar and I want you to dwell there. I want you to go stay there. When you get back to the house of God, don't move away the next time. When you go back to the house of God, don't leave your commitment. Don't leave your commission. Don't leave your place. Don't leave what God has given you. Go back to the house of God and dwell there. Some of us don't understand what the word dwell means. 
He told Jacob, go back. Two things he told him. Build me an altar. Hallelujah. Great God, about I feel this thing coming on. We got to start talking about altars because some of us have forgotten that. I feel sorry for you when you're in a church and the pastor don't know what the altar is and there's no altar call and nobody's being commissioned and taught to go to the altar. We've forgotten what it is to get on our knees at the altar and that's why so many in the churches are unaltered because we are afraid of the altar. But God told Jacob, when you go there, I want you to do something. Build an altar. Make me an altar. Cry out to me. Go back to the house of God and get on your knees and get a hold of the God of all gods. I am the God of your father Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. Go back to the house of God and I will be your God as I was your father's God and his father's God. Go back and make an altar when you get there. And the next thing he told him, dwell there. Dwell doesn't mean to visit. Hello, somebody. Dwell doesn't mean to show up every now and then. Dwell means to stay, to live, to become a part of. When you're dwelling in a place, some of us, oh, I'm going to help somebody right here. Some of you know why you have so many problems? Because you won't go somewhere where God put you and stay there. Hello, somebody. I'm going to help you today. You won't go and be where God told you to be and put your heart and your soul there. You're wandering around in your heart. You're wandering around in your mind. And your feet are happy and you're running around everywhere. And you can't get God's blessing because you're always messing. You can't get what God wants because you won't stay where God put you. You can't get what God wants you to have because you don't know how to stay still. You don't understand what the word dwell means. Hello, somebody. Go back to the house of God and dwell there. Somebody's always, Pastor, well, I believe God wants me to do a great work. Listen, you're too big to do the little things God wants you to do in the little place where he puts you. Well, I'm going to tell you a secret. You're going to be too little to do the big things God wants you to do when you go somewhere else. Uh, 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 it's like one preacher said, uh, we're like eagles in hummingbirds' nests. Uh, we got big ideas, uh, but the nest is too small. Uh, and we think we need to fly away uh, and do great things over there. Uh, friend, let me tell you something. If God has told you to go back to the house of God, you need to go and build an altar and dwell where he has put you you so that he can bless you and because God will never send you somewhere and not give you provision to help you to grow while you're there he told Jacob go back to Bethel go back and I will be your God now Jacob I don't know if he had forgotten this or not but he told the people put away the strange God that are among you and many of you know that scripture they took off their jewels and their gold and earrings and all this stuff. And they gave it to Jacob. He put it on a tree. And he told them to change your garments. They got prepared to go back to the house of God. I want to tell you something. There's a time and there's a place for everything. And there's a place of preparation in the heart and mind that we got to understand that when we come to seek God, God wants us to be ready to seek him in our minds and our bodies and our spirits. And he wants us to be ready to seek him. And so Jacob said, let's go back. We're gonna, he got, I'm going to get all my herds. I'm going to get all my stuff and pack it in the car. Somebody is saying it right now, Pastor, I don't know about that. But I'm going to tell you something. God will sometimes allow trouble to come so he can put us in the place we want us to be. What's why? Ask this somebody, I'm going to help you now. Who is to say uh, that part of God's reason for this pandemic uh, is to get somebody in place uh, so they can get back to the house of God? Uh, who is to say uh, that the disease that we've been experiencing is part of God's plan uh, to get you back to the house of God? Uh, who is to say uh, that part of this scattering uh, is to get you to begin to think and dwell on God? Uh, sometimes evil will befall you so that evil can help push you back to where God wants you. When Jacob went to Sukkoth uh, and he stayed there. Trouble fell on him. Trouble fell on his family. He didn't do anything wrong. His sons did. But God let trouble come. Why? Sometimes trouble will line us up with the will of God. Sometimes trouble will put us back in the place, in the house of God. Sometimes trouble will bring us back to the sanctuary of God. Sometimes trouble will bring us back to the place where we can pray, where we can cry to God, where we can repent of our sins, 
God. Sometimes trouble will make us build an altar and dwell in the place where God put us. Sometimes we need trouble. No, I'm not thanking God for the pandemic. But I'm certainly thinking him if the pandemic has caused somebody to get right. Amen. I don't want anybody to get sick and die from a disease. But I don't want anybody to get sick and die from sin either and be lost in hell. I got a greater desire for that than I do a worry about somebody being sick. Let me tell you something. I, I, I say to the people at our church all the time, God is a whole lot more concerned about your faith than he is your pain. Why? Because you're going to get over the pain. But faith and lack of faith and not believing God will cause you to be disobedient to his word. Amen. You need to get a hold of the Bible. Like one person said, this book of the Bible will cause you to stay away from sin. And sin will cause you to stay away from the Bible. You need to get a hold of the Bible so you can read that God wants you to go back to the house of God. He's a kind of place. You can read it in Chronicles, friend. When Solomon built the house of God, the temple, and he dedicated it, he prayed to God. God, let your spirit settle in this place. God, send your power in this place. There is a place where God has his spirit. There is a place out there that God wants you to be, and he will dwell with you there. There is a place where God will sustain you. There is a place where he will meet you. There is a place where he will recover you. There is a place where he will build your life. There is a place where he will change your nature. There is a place where he will give you the Holy Ghost. There is a place where he will change all your life. There is a place for you to dwell. Somebody better hear me today. There is a place. It turns out that this place Bethel was the same place that Abraham visited when he left his father's house over back in Genesis chapter number 12. Jacob went there, the Bible says, and he stopped alone in Bethel. If you notice with with Abraham, I mean, Abraham, wherever he went, he was always building altars. If God told him to go somewhere, he didn't argue with God. He simply went there. Amen, somebody. Some of us uh, need to understand the importance of God telling Jacob to go back to the house of God. Sometimes God can't bless us in where we are because we're where we want to be and not where he wants us to be. Hello, somebody. Amen. But this was the same place that Abraham went. And God tells Jacob, go back there and dwell there. Live among this place. And I'm going to bless you. Listen, here's what you'll find out. Some of us will go back, but we won't dwell. We'll come to church. I've had people say this to me. Well, pastor, I've had so many people. I'm going to come visit. Well, I'll be there. Well, we might be here for a little while. Well, where are you going? They don't know where they're going. Well, we'll come. We, we don't know if we're going to stay. We don't, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're staying. Who are you listening to? Who's giving you direction? Listen, friend, let me tell you something. You better get on your knees and begin to build an altar and ask God to give you some direction because you're going to find yourself shipwrecked if you're not too careful. Because some of us will go visit, but we won't dwell. And that's why we're having trouble and we're living in a nightmare because we're not dwelling where God said. Uh, we're just visiting. In our minds, we're visiting. In our spirits, we're visiting. And I'm going to tell you something else. The pastor can see your attitude and he knows your attitude if you're just visiting. I want to tell you this, uh, but you've got to find yourself out in a place where God said go and dwell there. Amen. You'll find in 1 Kings chapter number 17, Elijah, Elijah the, uh, the Tishbite, the Lord appeared unto him and told Elijah, go over to the brook of Cherith, and I want you to, to be in the brook of Cherith, and I want you to stay there. And the Bible says Elijah went and he hid himself by the brook of Cherith, and the Lord did what? Watch this, somebody. Uh, somebody said, why would God send me? I don't want to go out to that little old church down there. I'm going to tell you something. That little old church down there, God may send a raven by, just like he sent a raven to Elijah, and feed you and sustain you. I want you to know it's better that you got a little church where God has got the spirit of God going and he's sustaining you by the food of God than for you to be in a great big metropolitan place and you're starving and dying on the vine. I want to tell you to go back to the house of God. God's got a place. Go to the brook of charity, he told Elijah. The ravens will come and sustain thee. I want you to know 
Noah, if you go to the house of God, God will send the word of God through the man of God, and he'll sustain you. He'll give you what you need. God will never put you in the desert and not feed you there. Go to the house of God, and God will sustain you. And the brook dried up. He didn't get up and leave. He stayed until there was no water. He still didn't get up and leave. I don't have any water. Hey, the Bible tells me, the people of Israel murmured against Moses. You'll find this in the book of Exodus. I think it's around chapter number 16. They murmured against Moses. Why? There was no water in the place. And the Bible said they were charged with him. But I want you to know, when you go to a place where there's no water, hear me somebody, I'm talking to somebody right now. When you go to a place that God puts you and there's no water, it's because God wants you to stand still and show you how he's going to provide water. When you go to a place and you say, I don't know what we're doing out here. If you go back to the house of God, God will send the word of God. He'll send somebody to feed you and he'll send water. But the Lord, when the brook dried up, Elijah didn't just say to himself, well, let me see where I'll go next. I want to talk to somebody right here because I got to close this message pretty soon. But I want to tell you something. You better quit looking at going to your next job and trying to get your next promotion. And I'm going to move down here because the money's better. You better quit following money everywhere. And you better start asking God to send you to a house of God where you can be spiritually fed. Because, friend, I'm going to tell you something. You can have all the money in the bank you want. And it's not going to save your soul. You can have all the money in the world. But your soul is crying out. You need to stay where God put you in a house of God uh, so that you can be blessed uh, and not stressed. Hallelujah. Amen. He told Elijah when the brook dried up, Elijah didn't just decide where he wanted to go. Can I talk to you for a second? He didn't just decide where he wanted to go. He waited for the instruction of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Nowadays, we don't listen to her instructions. We nowadays, we don't pray and ask God for direction. Nowadays, we just say what we're going to do, what we're going to do, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Amen. We don't ask God which direction should we go in. We just start doing what we want to do, and then we try to make God like it. Hello, somebody. That's not how it works. Pray amen. But I saw Elijah while he's waiting by a dried up brook. Here comes God with a word from him. Go to Zarephath. Because why? I have a widow woman there who's going to sustain you. Come on, somebody. I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but you know how the widow woman was there. She had a little bit of meal. She was about to make one cake when Elijah came out, and Elijah told her, I want you to make me a, give me a morsel of bread. And she said, I don't have but just a morsel, and I'm going to take these two sticks and rub them together and make a little cake for my son and I, and we're going to eat this and die. Listen to me, somebody. When you go back to the house of God that God told you, he'll sustain you even if it's with a little widow woman. But a widow woman said to Elijah, I'm going to eat this and I'm going to die. And Elijah spoke the word of God in her heart. Do as thou hast said. Only make me a cake first. Will you give God the first cake? Will you give him the first thing off the grill? Will you make it for him if he told you to? Even though you're living in a land was dry. Give God the first thing. When you go back where he told you, he'll sustain you. The widow woman now why? Why well, wish I had time to work with this? Why would God send a man that's already hungry that he had to give some ravens meat, some meat from the raven, and he went in the strength of that meat 40 days? So he's already fasting on his way there. Why would God send me already hungry to a woman who's already hungry and dying and don't have nothing herself? What kind of supply is that? Well, I'm gonna tell you what. God wants you to let, let you know that he is the supplier and he'll do the incredible where you don't think it can be done. Go to the woman that don't got nothing. Listen to somebody, I'm going to help you right here. Had he sent Elijah to some place uh, where he can get all he wants himself, uh, he wouldn't have learned to trust in the Lord. Uh, if he didn't send Elijah to the widow woman, she would have thought God didn't care about her and let her die on the scene. So he taught two lessons at the same time. Uh, and the widow woman realized, uh, oh, there is a God in heaven. Uh, even though there's a drought, uh, there is a God in heaven. Uh, even though there's a pandemic, uh, there's a church that's preaching the Holy Ghost. Uh, even though there's a pandemic, there is a place that got the power of God moving. Even though there's a pandemic, 
Hallelujah. There's somebody being baptized in the name of Jesus. Even though things look bad, go to the house of God. Get back where you belong. And God will sustain you there. I hope I'm helping somebody and hurting nobody. Get back to the house of God. Some people have started back to church already. Their doors are open. And let me help somebody. Because somebody's going to say, well, I done got used to the videos now. I'm not going back. I'm going to wait it out. I know what you're saying. I don't want to get into disease. Somebody was talking to me the other day, not too long ago. I said the other day, it's been a few weeks now, how they don't come out of their house and how they don't go anywhere. And I listened carefully as they were talking. Hello, somebody. Before the conversation was over, I'm listening and they're talking. They told me how they had been to a certain store downtown where I know a lot of people go. So I'm thinking to myself while I'm listening to them on the phone, now you won't come out of your house, you're afraid of the pandemic, but you've been down to the store where everybody else is. Watch that liar, because God's listening to us. And God knows that you won't come out and do the things of God because you got something in your heart that's not right with God. I'm trying to help somebody, not hurt anybody. But I just want to tell you the truth, that God's listening to your lie, and he knows all about it. Oh, I just don't want to do that because I don't want to get sick. But you're all over town, walking here and on there, and doing what you want to do. But you won't go back to the house of God because you're afraid you're going to get the pandemic. Well, let me tell you something, friend. You can be the only person in the city, and if you don't obey God, God will still let you get the pandemic. I'm going to tell you right now, it's better for you to obey God and have the pandemic than to be without God and never contact anything that is harmful to your health. The Bible says in Revelation, blessed is he that dieth in the Lord. If I gotta die, let me die in the Lord. If I gotta die, let me be in the house of God. If I gotta die, let me be on the altar. If I gotta die, let me have the Holy Ghost when I leave. Oh, praise God, somebody. You got to get back to the house of God. Go back to the house of God. If you got to die, die on the front pew. Amen. If I got to leave, let me leave while I'm preaching. Amen. If I got to leave, let me leave while I'm helping the saints. If I got to leave, let me leave when I'm doing right. Not throwing a brick through somebody's window. Hello, somebody. If I got to leave, let me leave while I'm shaking hands with my neighbor instead of cursing him. If I got to leave, let me leave while I'm praying for my enemy, not telling my enemy off. Hello, somebody. If I got to leave, let me leave while I'm doing right by God, not backsliding and going back to my own way. Hello, somebody. God's all talking to somebody right now. You need to get back to the house of God. God's got time for you to do it right. But if you keep messing around, I'm prophesying to somebody right now. He's not going to give you much more time. You've got to get back to the house of God. I don't know who you are that I'm talking to, but whoever you are, you better get back to the house of God. Because God's not going to lean around forever for you to get back where he belongs and where you need to be with him in the word of God. Amen. I don't know who you are. But I know one thing. There's no substitute for being where God wants you. You don't believe me? Ask Jonah. He told Jonah, go to Nineveh. The Bible says Jonah went and found a boat. You know the story. Oh, I wish I had more time. He told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Help me, Holy Ghost. And Jonah said, I'm not going to Nineveh. God said, go to back. Cry against the wickedness. Some of you preachers, I want to tell you something. You better start crying against wickedness because God has got a way of cutting you off when you think you're going to go another route. Jonah, go to Nineveh and cry against the wickedness. Don't get mad at me because I tell you what sin is. Get mad at the devil for causing you to fall in it. Amen. But we need to tell the world what God has said. Jonah went to Nineveh. Instead of going to Nineveh, he bought the ticket to get on a boat to go to Tarshish. And the Bible says he went down to the boat to buy the, the, the ticket. And then he got on the boat to go. And he went down in the bottom of the boat. Let me tell you something. Every time you turn away from what God has said, you're going to go down and I don't care how much you pay, you're never going to get what you bargained for. You're never going 
forget and it turn out the, the way you think it's going to turn out. Jonah could have been to Nineveh, but he ended up in the belly of a whale. Why? Because he wouldn't hear the word of God. Go back to the house of God and dwell there. Somebody better hear me today. Go back to the house of God and dwell where God told you to dwell. See, there's no substitute. You'll find in the book of Matthew that when you're in a place of God, when you're where God has appointed, you can assure God's anointing. Some of us are wondering why we don't see the move of God. How come I don't see the move of God like he used to? Because you're out of God's will. Because you're out of his purpose. You're not where he wants you to be. You're not doing what he wants you to do where you are. You're not doing what God wants you to do, and you know you're not. So quit asking God why come he won't show you his will, because he's already shown you his will. You're just being too stubborn to do his will. Hello, somebody. I'm speaking to somebody right now. It may not be you. It might be your neighbor. But that's all right. Somebody knows that I'm talking to them. All right. So we are telling God, how come I don't see your hand? God said, I'm still here where I was all along. It's like the power in the wall. If your outlet is not connected to the power source, you can stick your fan in there all you want to. Your fan might not come on, but it's nothing wrong with the power in the power box. There's nothing wrong with God's power. It's your outlet. There's nothing wrong with God's power. It's your receiving end. There's nothing wrong with God's power. It's the thing that you're doing. So you're not receiving the power of God. There's something wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with God. We need to just go back to the house of God that he told us to go back to. There's nothing wrong with God. We just got it wrong. Once we understand that, Things will begin to work better. We see this. Where was I now? Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you're in the place where you've been appointed, you can be assured of God's anointing. Mark this. Matthew chapter number 28, verse 16 through 20. Thank you, Lord. Where the apostles, the Bible said, and they went into the mountain where he had appointed them. They didn't go to just any mountain. They went where they were appointed. You can read this at home at your leisure. But they went to the mountain where Jesus appointed them. There in the mount that he appointed them to go, where they went, he gave them the Great Commission, what we call the Great Commission. He told them, go into the world and preach the gospel. See, when you are where God wants you, he'll give you your marching orders. When you're where God wants you, he'll use you. When you're where God wants you, he'll bless what you put your hand to. When you're where God wants you, he'll get you started in your ministry. When you're where God wants you, he'll deliver you. When you're where God wants you, he'll bless your hand. When you're where God wants you, He'll bless your family. When you wear God boost you, he'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. But you've got to go to the place God said. They didn't just go to any mountain. Huh? They went to the place where he appointed. And there Jesus gave them the great commission. You can read it for yourself. Verse 16 through 20. See, some of us are trying to to use our own anointing. Watch this. And we shake and we quake like Samson. But we have the, not the spirit of God and the anointing of God in us to do what we're trying to do on our own. You can be as smart as you want to be, but if you're not where God wants you to be and you're being disobedient to his word, don't expect God to put his hand on it and bless you. you I'm going to tell you something, friend. Let me help you right here. Knowledge is a great thing. And the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. You're not trying to be smart for anybody else, but you need to be approved unto who? God. I want God's approval. And how do you get God's approval? You get it by obeying the word of God. You don't get it by showing God that you're more smarter than he is, that you're smarter than he is. You don't show it, do it by telling God that you've got the intellect and you know what you're doing. That's how you get in trouble. These higher critics who are trying to tell us to revise the Bible, friend, let me tell you something. You better revise your own self because God doesn't need any revision. He's God. Go back where he told you. Be obedient to what he told you. And scholar, you'll live for God. Doctor of the law, you'll live for God. A philosopher, you'll live for God. But you got to be obedient to the word of God and get in the place where God can use you. Hallelujah. Amen. The apostles went to the place God told them. They went into the place appointed. When you go where God tells you, he'll sustain you. I'm coming to
to a close now. When you go where God tells you, he'll sustain you. I tell people here at our church, tithing and offering is right. But if you don't think you need to give your tithing, keep it. Because I'm going to tell you what, it's going to hurt you more in your pocket than it's going to hurt you to give out of your pocket to the work of God. Because God is going to sustain me and my family no matter what you do. I'm going to tell you right now, he is going to plant seeds and he's going to let those seeds grow up and they're going to supply abundantly. Oh yeah, I already know. There's going to be some tares mixed in there. The enemy had done that. Somebody say, oh God, look at all these people you've given us. You might not want to think about this preacher. Maybe God didn't give you all those people. That's just another story, but I'll preach on that another time. Sometimes there's tares mixed in and the enemy, the Bible says, has done this. Oh, yes. But I'm going to tell you one thing. We need to get back to the house of God. In my closing, I want to tell you this. You, somebody may ask me, Pastor, how do I know if I'm back where God wants me? The first order of business is, are you surrendering your will to the will of God? Jesus gave the, the, the disciples a model of prayer. And in that model of prayer, you'll find this in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 10 or 11. I think it's verse 10, where he said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, you've got to get to a place if you want to get back to the house of God, where you surrender your will to God's will. And as long as you try to do what you want to do, you'll never end up at the will of God. You'll never end up at the place of God. You'll never end up where God wants you because your will is working all the time and you're fighting against God's will. I know you may be saying with your mouth, oh God, I'll go where you want me to go just as long as it's somewhere where I want to be. In your heart, you're telling God, I, I'll go as long as it's, I don't know about going over there. Oh yes. I know I'm talking to somebody. If it's not you, don't worry about it. But if it's you, you need to listen. Quit telling God your will be done and then you're fighting to do your own will. When I got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost, he became the Lord of my life. No, I didn't just say a sinner's prayer. I went down on my knees at an altar and prayed until the Holy Ghost came. And I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's how I got Jesus to be accepted in my heart. He came and dwelt in there. So he became the Lord over my money, the Lord over my dress, the Lord over my family, the Lord over my house, the Lord over my car, the Lord over my business, the Lord over everything that I got. All that I have is thine. And if he wants me over here instead of over there, so be it, God. We're telling God your will be done and you are trying to do your thing. How would I know I'm there? The moment you surrender completely your will, you're going to be there. Amen. What do I call that? I call it repentance. Peter said, repent and be baptized. Some of us don't have God in our life and we're not seeing the will of God because we're too arrogant and we won't repent for the sin we know we've done. We can't come to God. Let me tell you something. You can't even go get help from the Alcohol Anonymous if you want to admit you got a problem. And you're not going to get any help from God until you admit you got a problem. God, I'm broken. But he who ever fall upon this rock shall be broken. God's going to break you so he can use you. Because when you think you're all together, he can't do anything for you, Brother Bacon. Hello, somebody. How will I know? Surrender your will to God. Repent of your sins. If you haven't been baptized in water, obey Jesus' command. Be born again. Some of us don't understand this. I was telling somebody not long ago, legislation is never going to fix anybody's heart. We can want to change all we want to. But the reason we have so many problems with each other, with race relations, hate relations, and all the other kind of relations, marital problems, is because there's a problem on the inside of our heart. And until we get God in our heart, and we begin to be obedient to the word of God, arise, he told Jacob. Go back to Bethel. I'm going to beat you there. Amen. Until we arise and let God know wherever you want me, I'll serve you. Wherever you want me, I'll live for you. Just change my nature. That's where the problem is. If we can get a hold of God and let him change us from the inside out. Come on, somebody. He'll change us from the inside. Give us a brand new nature. I heard Ezekiel talk about it. Putting his spirit on the inside. Getting rid of the old law. Putting in the new law of the 
God, the Spirit of God. God wants you to be changed. Only then will we be obedient to the Word of God. And when we submit to that and God fill us up, then we know we are there. We are ready to be used for God. Some of us need changing and rearranging. And then God will come and stage us. Amen? God is telling some of us, get in place. Get that altar built. Get in touch with me. And I'll give you direction. Somebody said when this pandemic is over, I'm going to go to church. Well, I want you to know God is listening to you. Some people say, well, they got to sit just a few people so everybody can't go. So I'm going to opt out until everything gets back to normal, then maybe I'll go. Well, God sees the heart, and he knows that one thing, be careful, because if your heart's not right, God might not let you get back in when the house gets full. Amen. You don't believe me? I got some scripture I can give you, but I got to let you go. He gave the word to the man of God, to Elijah. He told the man of God that, hey, at tomorrow this time, the king of Israel, you're going to be able to starve in a famine, and you're going to be able to eat bread and buy it for almost nothing. But the man who the, who the king leaned upon, his chancellor, his counselor, he said, can God do this thing? He doubted in his heart. And the prophet told him, you're going to see it with your eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it. You better be careful because God sees your heart and he'll let the church get full and you'll be as empty and as dry as a bone. You better be careful with your faith because God hears that. You better obey God while you got a chance and get back to where he wants you so that you can be filled with the anointing and the power of God. I hope this message has helped somebody. I hope it blessed you. Go back to the house of God. Yes, I know we've been scattered. Yes, I know God has blessed the church even when we've been out. But some of us, even when we've been out, we have strayed even further away from God. Hello? Some of us got out of church and we were so glad in our little hearts, we ain't telling anybody. I'm talking about you, it's okay. I'm trying to help you. We didn't tell anybody, but we were glad we had a little sabbatical from the church. We don't have to go. And some of us, since we've been out, we haven't prayed. We haven't built an altar to God in our house. We've been so busy doing other things. We've been so busy running around doing what we want to do, sleeping in late, that we've gotten lazy, that we don't even know who God is. We haven't picked up the Bible, read the Bible in days. Maybe I'm talking to somebody. So we've done what? We left the church to do what? Drift off further. Now it's going to be a longer journey before you can get back to where you fell off. Hello, somebody. Some of us, I know I'm talking to somebody. Some of us have gone further than we were before we said we got saved. And we done backslid because of the pandemic. God didn't give us a pandemic for you to backslide. He gave us a pandemic for us to realize that we need God. And that we need to come back to focus on God. So that we can get our minds right with God. He let us have the pandemic because things like this happen. And it's just a natural course of men that God will send these things at times. He didn't do this for us to fall away. We need to get back to the house of God. And when you get there, do yourself a favor. Build an altar and dwell there. And God will bless you. Do it God's way. And I can assure you, you'll get God's results. If there's repentance you need, repent. If there's baptism you need, get baptized in the name of Jesus. Get to a church that baptizes in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. If there's the Holy Ghost you need, repent of your sin and God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost just like he did on the day of Pentecost. He's still pouring it out. The power's still there. Some people are just afraid of the power and they won't ask God for it. And they'll go without. But you don't have to do that. If nobody will help you, call Pastor Baker. 559-333-3018. I'll make sure it gets done. You'll be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? You need to get back to the house of God. God bless you. Thanks.